Hi everyone, welcome to the 10th lecture of the series. So in this presentation, I'm going to introduce the first of the four uh, optimization operations here, known as uh, epsilon removal. So let's get started. So this is where we are now, we're at the start of the optimization process. Um, so first of all, what is epsilon removal? Uh, to put it simply, is that given a, uh, a regular uh, uh, finite automaton, you're going to remove the epsilon transitions. As to, I, I hope you still can remember what is an epsilon transition. Okay, so, so for example, this is this particular transition here from three to two. This epsilon transition because it requires epsilon as an input, right? So, the epsilon removal algorithm, right, takes a takes such a transducer, right, removes all the epsilon tra transitions, and then it it creates a equivalent uh, epsilon free uh, transducer. I right, can see here that, that it's hard to believe that this and this are actually equivalent, but they are. Right? except that this doesn't have any epsilon transitions. So, but why? Why, why do we even try to remove an, eps, uh, an epsilon transition? Well, you realize that in order to use a transducer, it, it, most of the time, the, 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 it requires you to search through the entire transducer itself. Now, of course, you can think of it as uh, your, your search space. This is your search space. And then what happens is that if you have a lot of uh, epsilon tran transitions, uh, what it will create a lot of redundant paths. And then if imagine if you could take this and reduce to this, right? You take your original search space and you augment the, it to such a small space. Uh, it's going to make the transducer more efficient to use. And that, that is why that is why we do epsilon removal, right? So the actual algorithm itself can be found in uh, several texts. But uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty hard to read off the right the bat, uh, right off the bat. So what I so I hope I can give you an intuition of this algorithm using a very simple example. Now um, suppose you consider the three paths 0, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 2, 5, 0, 1, 3, right? You can see that easily from if I take zero one two four, I just need a as an input. Essentially, I just need a as an input, right? If I were to take zero one two five, well, I just take I just, I just require b as an input. And 0, 1, 3 is the same. I just need C as an input. So what do we do? Well, we can throw away the throw away the intermediate states, right? 1 and 2 with, with that has the uh, that have the the epsilon uh, transitions, right? We can throw away this, throw away this, and then we can merge the starting uh, node in, 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 in question and ending destination state in question, and we can join them together and uh, get 0, 4, right? We can throw them away, right? And then connect 0 to 4, and then we can claim that this particular new transition requires A as an input. Now, for the weight itself, for the weight itself, it's a different issue, right? But you, you, I hope you can get the idea that you were, you're throwing away, you're throwing away all the state that have the epsilon transition, combining the the initial state with the destination state to obtain a new transition, right? But the weight, what about the weights? The weights. Uh, basically requires you to calculate something known as the weighted epsilon closure of each state. So what is that? Now this is where the actual math comes into play. Right? You will see this this particular expression here, uh, known as the uh, 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 the set of a uh, weighted epsilon closure per state. Right. So what does it mean? Well, it may look very very mathematical, but it actually means right is that as long as Suppose you're starting at uh, uh, state P, right? So between state P and Q, state Q, this is a state, right? So between state P and state Q, as long as it's made up entirely of epsilon tr uh, uh, transitions, right? You're going to put Q into this particular tuple. Therefore, you're going to put this part particular tuple into this set itself, right? So as long between P and Q, there there exists the, 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 the transitions between P and Q are all epsilon transition. You're going you're gonna to put Q into into this, right? And then you're going to calculate the corresponding uh, delta, which is the, the weight of the epsilon path. The weight of the epsilon path. Here, here, here's the expression. So between P and Q, P and Q, as long as it's made up of uh, epsilon transitions, you're going to calculate the weight of this particular path, uh, or many, many paths, and you, and you add them together, right? So, so you're going to, and you're going to get this uh, W, right? And then you're going to uh, order this Q with this W and throw it into this, this weighted epsilon closure set for state P. Okay. Once you have that, what you're gonna do is that is that from Q, then you're gonna you're gonna augment all transitions using uh, these two particular uh, expressions. But this, what does it actually mean? Is that suppose you are at Q now, right? And then from Q to this new state R, that doesn't have any epsilon transition, right? That doesn't have any epsilon transition. Has a particular weight, 
right? So what what we're going to do today is that you're going to throw away Q, throw away the intermediate state, right? Throw away the state with the epsilon uh, uh, transitions, throw it away, and combine P with R, right? You, it's, it's, it, you, you just have the, the earlier picture in mind. You throw away state 1 and state 2, right? You, you, you throw them away, and then you're going to augment the weight with a particular, uh, using the, uh, the weighted epsilon closure uh, of that particular of P, right? So let's... Let's further understand what this is talking about. This is just too mathematical. So suppose I go back to the same example. What do I have here? Well, again, consider uh, C0, right, for state 0. Uh, it, I'm going to identify all states between 0 and, and some state that contains entirely of epsilon transitions. So you can see it's just 1 and 2 in this case. Why? So z 0 to 2. Right, it's epsilon transition one, epsilon transition two. There's two epsilon transitions, right? Zero to one is also made up of entirely of epsilon transition, right? So we're gonna throw this two tuple into the state itself, uh, the, the the set itself. Sorry. Then what do I do? Is that for one, I'm gonna calculate the weight of the path, uh, the epsilon transition path. So in this case, it's just this particular transition. So it's just one, right? There's really nothing much to calculate. But for two, right? So zero to one, one to two, you need to multiply the weights of the the transitions together. So 1 times 1. So this is how you deal with uh, weights itself. You're going to multiply the weights together. So 1 times 1. But remember, we are defining we're defining this uh, acceptor over the tropical semi-ring. So what does it mean is that the, the, multiplication, the multiplication is defined as classical addition, uh, which is, so 1 times 1 is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. So you get 2, and again, you're going to, you're going to throw this particular two tuples into C0, the set C0. And you're gonna get you're gonna get this right so what I've decided to do is to color code red being the state itself right so red being the state itself so if you see any other colors on numbers it, it probably means weights right so what we do once we have uh, c0 we're gonna update we're gonna update correspondingly uh, the, the the transitions that ha that that starts right, with Q Right, so in this case, we're going to consider transitions that start from 1 and 2, right? That are not epsilon transitions. So you can see from 2 to 4, 2 to 5, they are not epsilon transitions. So this particular trans transition is 2A, 2, 4, right? You can see here, 2A, 2, 4, and this particular transition here is 2B, 3, 5, right? They, are, they start from Q, right? In this case, it's 2, Q goes to 2, right? And it branches out with without a epsilon transition. So one will have this particular transition here, one C43, right? You're gonna get this, right? And what you're gonna do? Now you're gonna throw away, you're gonna throw away two, right, and one, right? You're gonna throw away Q. Let's see, it's the Q is being thrown away and replaced with the initial state. Right? So throw away two, replace it with zero, right? Everything else the same, four is the same, A is the same, and then you're gonna augment the weight by multiplying it with the corresponding uh, uh, weighted epsilon closure, right? Right, so because this is you, you, uh, you're considering state two, you're gonna you're gonna multiply by uh, delta zero two. If you're cons this considering state one, you you, you multiply it with uh, delta zero one. You're gonna augment it this way, right? So what do you get? Uh, okay, so two. So this is the values here, two and one, right? So two times two gives you four, right? Because two plus two is four. Two times three gives you five, and one times four gives you five as well. So what happens is that you have this old transition, right? This particular transition here. You're gonna augment it into zero a four four, and two b three five. Throw away the two, augment the three. You get zero b five five, right? Throw away the one, augment the four. You're gonna get zero c five three. And then what you're gonna do? So this was, this is what you end up with. Your initial. Uh, acceptor and this is your final acceptor and you've you see you've seen here it's equivalent to throwing in state one and two and then you're gonna merge them together and the weight is uh, calculated corresponding accordingly uh, with the with the weighted epsilon closure so this is a very simple idea of how the the uh, the epsilon removal algorithm actually works right um, if you want to know more uh, you can uh, you can refer to this person Joseph R Novak. Uh, he has a set of slides known as Weighted Finite State Transducer Important Algorithm, right, of uh, University of Tokyo. Uh, inside, it has a very detailed explanation and a detailed example of how a epsilon removal algorithm works, right. So um, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture, and I'll see you again next time.